Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So yes, I have been MIA for a few weeks and I apologize about that, but if you haven't been able to tell, I have recently moved to a new place. So I've been dealing with that and it's kind of really stressful and moving is kind of the worst thing in the world, but the one good thing about moving is that you find things that you forgot existed, uh, like a lot of my old artwork. So I am going to be showing you guys a bunch of my old art. Most of it's going to be stuff from middle school, early high school. So there's going to be a lot of anime and manga art in here, which I know you guys always ask me for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, sorry for going missing for a few weeks, but I hope this makes up for it. So let's begin. Okay, so I'm going to start this off with a bang. This is a book that everyone made in the third grade. They like published them and bound them and everything and it was a cool project um, at the time. But we all had to write a story and draw it and basically I wrote fan fiction. Um, for those of you who don't know, there was a book slash comic book series called Witch that I was kind of obsessed with and for my project I, uh, I did a fan fiction of it. Basically. So this is the first page. I remember being so proud of this because it had like depth to it, but then the door doesn't actually line up with the walls. Um, anyway, moving on. So these are my little characters. Oh gosh, I don't even know if you can see. It's so light because I drew just in pencil and markers. Um, but yeah, so I was, I think, Gosh, I don't even think I was 10 years old. I think I was eight or nine years old at the time when I drew this. So this is like really, really old stuff. Um, this is fire, in case you couldn't tell. Honestly, I don't really know what's going on in this. Um, it's, I mean, it's written by a third grader, so yeah. I was really proud of this page too, though, because I like took all the time to color all of it with my markers, and I was like, oh yeah. Um, and here's a bit more close-up of the girl characters that I drew. They're uh, really interesting, and yeah, like I said, uh, fan fiction for Witch. If you guys know what Witch is, I will love you forever because I was obsessed with that for the longest time. Okay, so I think I'm actually in middle school here. I think I'm in sixth grade, so I think I was maybe 11 or so, um, about 10 years ago. This is supposed to be Miley Cyrus, if you guys couldn't tell bring you guys a little bit closer. Yeah, this was supposed to be Miley Cyrus um, in her Hannah Montana days. Um, this was just a character. Let me see, let me fast forward. So something I really loved to do was create characters and create little stories and backgrounds for them. Um, so this is Luna, Princess of the Shadows, and she has an amulet of shadows. I forgot what kind of storyline she followed, but this is her friend, Maya, Maya, Sorceress of the Shadows, ooh. And then this is Lyra, Princess of the Light, who has a ring of light. I don't know what the ring does, you know, just a ring of light. And then this is Selena, Sorceress of the Light. Um, so yeah, those are very early original characters that I've completely forgotten about. So this is actually something pretty interesting. Um, I drew these, and this is actually when I discovered anime. So I was drawing in my current style, and then I drew this one, which is heavily inspired by anime. And then two or three years later, this was actually drawn in 2009, um, I found this notebook again, and then I redrew it, and then I redrew it again in 2011 with my current style at the time, then again in 2013 again in 2015, and then I did this one just earlier today in 20, oh gosh, I drew the, <laughs> I did the date wrong still. It's 2017 now, I'll have to fix that. Um, but I think it's really cool to be able to look back on your old art. So, there is a solid 10 year difference between the two of these. So I think that's really cool that I still have this and I can look back and see how dramatically I have improved. Okay, so this is 2009. Um, as you can see, 
heavily inspired by anime now. I pretty much only drew in an anime style from this point on. Um, I was really heavy into Gaia Online when I drew these. Um, I don't know if you guys, oops. I don't know if you guys remember what Gaia Online was, but it was basically just like a chat room and you had like this avatar you could dress up and I was obsessed with it and I drew stuff from it all the time. Um, this is another original character of mine. I actually remember her story. Um, basically, it's the stereotypical, she's a girl who turns into a cat and she acts like a cat, but she's like a cuper, like super cute, kawaii anime girl, so... Yeah, I don't remember her name though. I think it was like something cat like. Oh, Luna. Her name is Luna. It's on the tag. Okay. Um, you guys will see as I go through these, I often revisit these and draw them again. So this was actually drawn in 2015, um, inspired by this that I drew back in 2009. Um, I kind of want to draw it again, even, but I was really proud of this because I thought the character design was awesome. Um, but if you look really closely, her arm doesn't actually connect to her body on like any side. Oh, I'm losing room. Oops. But yeah, her body doesn't actually connect to her arm because I didn't understand how to make that work. So I just kind of left it free floating. This is more Gaia online stuff, more of the avatars that I would draw. I basically drew them to practice. Okay, so this is still 2009. So middle school, I think seventh or eighth grade. So it was maybe uh, 12 or 13, but I don't know if you guys recognize this, but this was the start of my Tokyo Mew Mew phase. I was obsessed with Tokyo Mew Mew. I read all the manga. I hated the anime for some reason. I, something was wrong with the anime, I can't remember. But I was obsessed with Tokyo Mew Mew, so I practiced drawing expressions. And I basically just filled a whole bunch of pages, um, copying directly from the manga. And I actually colored a few as well. So this was Ichigo. Um, Ichigo was my favorite. I loved her. I thought she was so cute. Um, and what I basically did is I was afraid of messing up my sketches. So I would scan the drawing and then print it out on a new piece of paper and then color on that instead of the original. Um, so yeah, this is another Tokyo Mew Mew. I can't remember her name. Um, I think it was Lettuce. I think they were all named after food. Oh god, it's been so long since I've watched or read Tokyo Mew Mew. Um, and then this is Mint, I believe her name was. Um, yeah, I was really proud of her expression and her hand, especially in this one. Um, I just remember being like, oh my god, that looks like a hand. Um, some other gems from this era of my drawings. I was really proud of this one. Um, I actually posted this to Gaia online as well because they had like an art forum and I was so proud of this, so proud, until someone pointed out that her arms looked like her elbows are pointing backwards, like in, and then I hated it. And I like was really angry because it looks like her arms are pointing the wrong way. Um, this is another Gaia online drawing that I did of someone's avatar. And then this is just a face that I was proud of because I love how the eye turned out. I hope you guys can see that. Um, but yeah, this is actually a little bit later. This was a year later in 2010, but it was in the same area. <laughs> okay, so this is now the end of 2009. This is my first ever attempt at watercolor. Um, I got a pack of watercolors for my birthday and I tried them out and this was the first time I'd ever touched watercolor. So yeah, it's interesting. All right, at this point in time, I was heavily referencing from anything and anything I could find. Um, this was directly copied from the Chobits art book. Um, I didn't really like Chobits, but I loved the art and the art style that it was drawn in. And I had an art book of Chobits, so I just drew a ton of Chobits stuff directly from the book. Um, it was completely referenced. Nothing was actually drawn by myself. Um, but I was still pretty proud of it nonetheless. 
This is a mermaid. I remember loving her eyes. I thought her eyes looked really cool in this one. And I colored it completely with metallic gel pens too, so a plus on that. More Chobits stuff, as same as before. This is a fairy riding a unicorn. Um, I still think this is kind of cute. I don't know. I think it's cute. <laughs> Um, I remember being super, super proud of how this one came out. Um, it was the first time I'd try to draw, like, an expression. Um, I wanted to make her look, like, somber and serious. Um, and I was just really proud with how this one came out. Uh, so, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Her eyebrows are going on top of her hair, but, you know, whatevs. Um, this is actually uh, one of the artists that I really looked up to at this time. Um, I think her name was Sakuko on DeviantArt. Um, this was her character, and she was holding a contest for people to draw her character. So I drew her, and I just remember her character designs being, like, super cute. This is just a girl, again, frilly clothing. I was going for something more gothic in this. I was also really inspired by... Um, Oh my gosh, the name escapes me. It's about vampires. It's an anime about vampires. I'm sure you guys know it. It's super popular. Cannot remember the name, but it was inspired this kind of outfit because they had a lot of like gothic clothing in it. I can't believe I'm forgetting the name of that anime. Wow, okay, moving on. Do -do. This was something I drew in the summer. I remember I wanted to draw something summery then, so excuse me. Gosh, what is this? I fall asleep dreaming and wishing that you were still here. I was a very emotional child. I was the epitome of I'm 14 and I think this is deep. So I had a lot of like really angsty art. Um, a lot of it never like finished or anything happened with it. Um, but this is definitely one of them. Ooh, here's more angsty art, perfect. Um, there's like a shadow of herself, like crawling up her leg, and she's like out of it. I don't know. I was proud of this at the time, definitely. Um, it's kind of a cool concept, though. I remember this was inspired by the song Airplanes by uh, B.O.B. Uh, featuring Haley Williams from Paramore. So I wanted to draw something like that. And this is actually my little cousin. I drew her as a fairy. She modeled for me, and then I life drew her, kind of. Except I drew her sitting on a mushroom with, like, a city in the background and as a fairy because I thought it would be cute. And she really liked it, so there we go. Okay. So this is still from 2010, still that same summer as the last one. Um, I drew a lot that summer, and I remember I drew this body, this potato body, like 500 times, trying to get it to how I wanted it, and I just remember still not being happy with how it turned out. Um, but I was proud of all the detail I got in the wings and stuff, but this body just killed me. This was like a yin-yang type thing. I was playing around with like different clothing styles and stuff. This is a girl running away. Um, can't really see it, but they're like butterflies and then stained glass. They're supposed to be wings. Um, and she has like chains on her ankles. Oh my gosh. Look at her little feet. Look how silly that looks. Oh my gosh, I love it. Oh, this is so cute to look back on. That's just a random girl. And then this was actually inspired by a Vocaloid song um, because I was also heavily, heavily, heavily obsessed with Vocaloid at the time. Um, and this was inspired by the song World's End Dance Hall. Um, yeah, I was slightly obsessed. And I was really proud of how many different like things I got into this one, even though they still look kind of, I don't know, they'd probably fall over, but I was proud of it at the time. This is actually a year later. I think I like forgot about this sketchbook and then came back to it because this was drawn in 2011. Um, but yeah. Okay, so at this point I have officially started high school. Um, I know I've said this before, but I was a very introverted and socially awkward high schooler. So I spent most of my days uh, drawing in my sketchbook, which was fine by me, but luckily I did learn how to get out of my shell a little bit in high school. Um, and yeah. 
So <laughs> I actually have a funny story about this one. Um, one of the first friends I actually made in high school, she wanted to see my sketchbook. Um, and I know every artist has that feeling when someone asks to see your sketchbook and you're like, oh no, um, because this one was in it. And she looked at me and she looked at this and she had this expression of, what the heck, on her face. And I was trying to explain to her, I was doing um, a challenge type thing, and the challenge for this drawing was to draw something symbolizing sacrifice. So I looked at her and like, oh, no, it's fine, it just, it means sacrifice. And then she gives me the weirdest look, like, oh my god, who the heck are you? What, what am I doing? Why am I, and she gave it back really quick. Um, but it was really funny, and we laughed about it for like the rest of high school. This is just a girl with very, very wonky legs. Gosh. This was another one of those drawing prompts. The prompt was mirror. And if you can see, I did like a whole bunch of different expressions and all the glass. I still think this is kind of a cool concept. I'm not quite sure what I was going for, but it looks pretty cool. So I actually have this on my channel because I did a redraw of this. Um, I've actually redrawn this three different times now. I was so incredibly proud of this piece when I first did it. I spent so much time drawing each of these little individual leaves. You guys can see that. I drew each leaf and I colored all of them different colors and I was just so proud of how this one came out. And then two years later, I drew it again, and then two years later, I drew it again, and then in another two years, I will draw it again and keep going, because that's something I really enjoy doing. This was me practicing with different styles and like skin tones and stuff. Um, most of the stuff I colored with at this point were Prismacolor pencils. That was like my go-to medium for a lot of these. This is more angsty teenage, freshman year, 15-year-old self art. Ooh, this one was fun. Um, it was Halloween time when I did this and I wanted to draw something spooky. So I drew a girl covered in blood, holding a doll. It says Alice told me to, like the doll told her to kill someone. Um, yeah, like I said, angsty 15 year old. I mean, what are you gonna do? This was, I think, actually drawn on Halloween or really close to Halloween. Um, just like a little witch and a vampire girl. I thought they were really cute, especially this witch. I still think she's pretty cute. This is another experimenting with my art style and colors and stuff. I was really proud of how this came out too. I remember looking this or looking at this and being like, this is my art. This is what I want my art to look like. And having that like moment of like being proud of your art. So this has a special place in my heart because I was so happy with it. So this was actually one of the first watercolor pieces that I did. Um, this was primarily made with watercolor pencils and Prismacolor pencils. And I was so proud of this, guys. I was so happy with how this came out. I thought it was so cool. I thought the colors were like, whoa! Um, I actually kind of want to redraw this now in my new style uh, with all the watercolor techniques I have now because I don't know, I just remember being so, so proud of this. Oh my goodness. It just fell apart. Okay, I'm gonna move that to the side. Okay. Um, this is a boy and girl snow... Ice skating. They are ice skating in a snow globe. Oh my god, this is falling apart! Just like my life. Uh, this is an angel. Uh, I really liked drawing wings at this point in my life, um, like the angel wings. And this is again done with watercolor pencils. I cannot remember the brand, so I'm sorry I don't remember the brand. I think there were just some generic watercolor pencils. And this was actually drawn quite a few months later. Um, as you can see, my anime-ness has kind of, oops, as you can see, the anime influences have not quite gone away completely, but it doesn't look quite as anime. And this was drawn during my transition period from anime to something not anime. Um, but this was inspired by the song Butterfly Cry by Curly. And this was another one that I was super, super duper 
happy with. Um, I still honestly kind of really love it. Of course, it needs a whole bunch of work and if I were to go back and do it again, I would do a lot of things different, but I'm really proud of the concept and the composition of it with the bleeding butterflies. I think it's still really, really cool. And this is still something I'm actually pretty proud of. So yeah. Okay, so this is actually the last sketchbook I will be showing in this video because this marks the end of my anime phase. In this sketchbook, I actually transition from anime to I don't know what, not quite like a western, it's still heavily influenced by a lot of anime things, but it doesn't quite have that distinct anime look that a lot of my other works had. Um, and it says thank you Make-A-Wish here because the sketchbook was actually gifted to me by the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And yes, I am a wish kid and I got to go to Disney World and it was amazing. Anyway, topic for another video. So this is a little angel and devil type girl. This is just a anime girl with a face. I liked her eyes in this one and she's like, hey. This is a fairy and a rose. This rose was actually drawn from a real rose and then I hated how it turned out and I tried to draw a fairy and then I got frustrated and I gave up on this. Turn those out, I did. So, a lot of the reason why I transitioned from anime to something else was because of some tutorials on DeviantArt, specifically Lunaki, L-O-O-N-A-K-I I think is her name, I will link it down below, um, but she had this really cool way of drawing eyes that I really wanted to mimic, so that was a huge inspiration for me changing my art style into something less anime-ish. This is a angel girl and she's all sad looking. I was playing around with like anatomy in this. The anatomy still isn't great. I like how her butt like sticks all the way out like that. It's kind of silly. This is a mermaid. Merm merm. This is an original character of mine that I did absolutely nothing with. Um, her name was Phoenix and she could control fire. I know, isn't that just the most groundbreaking thing you've ever heard? This is a girl with, this is so funny because that is not how you hold a camera, like at all. I don't even think I was really, I don't know. I don't know where my brain was with this. I wanted draw girl taking pictures. First of all, the camera, this makes me laugh so hard. The camera is like the size of her eyeball. And then her hand is like backward. And then her wrist, I don't, this makes me giggle because it's so silly. This was me playing around with styles again. Um, I also started using different color pencils um, around this time. Still using color pencils, but I was only using like one color to shade the whole skin. So I remember for this, I tried using multiple different colored pencils for the same area, which was groundbreaking for me. So for like the hair, I used a dark brown and a light brown. Um, and that was like life changing. This is actually a redraw of that other drawing I showed in one of my other sketchbooks. Um, but I found it and wanted to draw it again. This is Belle from Beauty and the Beast. Oh my gosh. I actually kind of like this. I like how this turned out. This is cool. I like how I did the flower and everything. It turned out not cool. Her eyes are uh, kind of different sizes, but that's okay. This was that same character, Phoenix, from before. I, yeah, I drew her twice and then forgot about her, so I'm sorry, Phoenix. This is Punzi, my favorite Disney princess. Um, I don't know why she looks so sad, though. She looks, like, really sad, but anyway. Oh, <laughs> this is, um, again, Rapunzel. Um, I wanted to draw her in, like, a... <clears throat> okay, this is a little scary. <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay, so like I said, <laughs> this is my transition period, and I like to call this phase in my art the awkward puberty stage, because I feel like my art progressed a lot and was getting better, but just like puberty, a lot of weird stuff happened in between. So, like, the proportions are not 
quite human. Um, I wanted to get away from the anime eyes, um, but as you can see, they're still gigantic. And all I can think about when looking at this is if you were to take like the skull, like the skull form of this human being, it would look terrifying. So, I don't know, I love looking at this though, because it really shows how far I've progressed. Because this honestly looks a little scary. This is playing around with different things. Oh gosh, this is also a little scary to look at. Um, but I was really practicing like facial anatomy, how everything worked together, trying different tutorials from different people, all kinds of stuff. This is a slightly less scary drawing. Um, this was also taken directly from a tutorial made by the same person who did the eye tutorial, Lunaki, who I will link. Um, I drew this from a tutorial that she had. This was a girl holding an umbrella. It's cute. Um, this is more practice. This is the human body practice and a male face practice. Um, this is a little wonky though because I don't think anyone has a face quite that long. He kind of looks like a horseman. Um, but yeah, we all learn to get better. And this is when I learned, you guys keep telling me this in the comments of my how to draw face video, um, not to draw a symbol but an object. I said that in my face video and you guys said it was very helpful. So this is actually when I learned that. That's the first time I learned it and it's stuck with me ever since. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that trip down memory lane with me. Uh, it was quite nostalgic and it was really fun to look back on all of my old art. Um, I know that I may seem a little bit harsh talking about my old art, but that's only because I've been drawing for so long and I drew this stuff so long ago, I can look back and laugh at it because I just know I've put in the work behind it and I've improved my art so much since then. So I hope you guys come away from this video laughing and I hope that you guys are a little bit inspired because even if your art may look like some of my old art, just keep knowing that if you keep drawing and keep at it and keep pushing yourself that you will get a lot better, trust me. I know it can, get, it can be discouraging sometimes because you feel like you're never getting better, um, but trust me, you are. And one day in like 10 years, you're gonna look at all of your old art and laugh just like I am right now. So thank you guys for experiencing this with me and I will see you in my next video, bye.